You know, I didn't expect the win to look like this tonight. Now, for those of you who tuned into the pregame report, I said the NHL handed me the script. I said the Oilers would win. They would force a game five. Uh, the script didn't say 8-1, and I actually did think Sam Gagne was going to play tonight. He did not. It does not matter. The Oilers find a way to extend this series. It is a 3-1 series lead for the Florida Panthers, and if it was truly the last game at home for Edmonton this season, they gave the fans a lot to cheer for. And, uh, you know, right from the get-go, right from the get-go, the Oilers were on top of it they took an early penalty it was a bad penalty by darnell nurse i did not like that kneeing call uh now it was a kneeing call obviously i'm glad that they reviewed it i'm glad that they called the five minutes and reviewed it and then you know brought it down to a two minute penalty but darnell nurse has got to play a little bit more smart uh especially at the start of games obviously there's a lot of emotions going on but the fact that and you know connor brown holy smokes there's so much to talk about i have to get my brain straight here I have to calm down. I have to take a deep breath. I just finished the live stream. So my brain is in a lot of different areas at the moment. Oilers went 8-1. Uh, the game got off uh, you know, on the right foot. You had Matias Yanmark with a shorthanded goal assisted by Connor Brown. Connor Brown, he, you know, Sergei Bobrovsky really overcommitted on the partial two-on-one for the Oilers on that penalty kill. And then uh, Montour, he was trying to take the pass away from Yanmark, and then he slid into Bobrovsky. Uh, Brown, the puck ends up coming out in front. Yanmark scores shorthanded. And then Adam Henrique from uh, Yanmark and Ekholm, which was beautiful. Uh, that really set the tone. And then Florida, you know, they started to push back. 2-0 Edmonton, Vladimir Tarasenko, great tip goal. There's nothing Skinner could have done on that. It was a beauty, beautiful tip for, uh, on a shot from the point. Tarasenko makes it 2-1. And then now the turning point of this game, the turning point of the game was the save that Stuart Skinner made on uh hold on hold on i need to i need to find it give me one second give me one freaking second it was the save on uh well Ma matthew could chuck in the third period for one but then there was a save on who is this who is this on florida let me just take a quick look here i'm trying to figure that out Verhage. oh my gosh see I, you know, there's so much happened in this game. I didn't realize who it was. Verhage. In the first period, it was 2 1. Verhage. It was a 2 on 1. The puck comes to Verhage. Stuart Skinner made that unbelievable cross ice save. He got his arm on it and then he covered it up. Stuart Skinner played the best game he's played all playoffs. The Edmonton Oilers as a team played their best game of the playoffs. It's not often you blow out the Florida Panthers. You know how mad they're going to be going into game five. You know how mad they're going to be. There's a lot of emotions. And the, the, the toughest game to win is game four in any playoff series. And the Florida Panthers, it's tough. You're on the road. You fly out all of your friends and family because on the chance that you do win the Stanley Cup, you want everyone in the building for the pictures, that sort of thing. You want everyone to be able to come out on the ice and celebrate with you after the game. Uh, there's a lot that goes on. I think mentally, you just kind of you know possibly lose focus. And at the same time... The Oilers, they have nothing to lose, you know? The Oilers, of course, like you can say, yeah, if they lose, they lose the cup, but they're down 0-3. So for Edmonton, for those of you who tuned into the live stream, someone asked me, what are the keys to the game tonight? What can Edmonton do to be successful? And I said, they just have to rely on their instincts. The Edmonton Oilers just have to rely on their instincts. All of these players have played big games, whether it's been in junior, whether it's on the world stage, whether some of these players have been in the cup final before. A lot of these players have been here. And this is not new territory, even though a lot of them, this is their first Stanley Cup finals. It's not new territory in terms of big games. For the Edmonton Oilers, all I said was rely on your instincts, rely on what got you here in the first place. Trust your game, trust your teammates. And the Edmonton Oilers, top to bottom in this lineup. And, and you know, the scoring, the, the depth scoring tonight is such a good sign. And not only that, we finally got goals from Connor McDavid. We got a goal from Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Uh, Leon Dreisettel had a couple of assists tonight. Uh, Ryan McLeod with a goal. Dylan Holloway with two goals. Cor I, I think Connor McDavid had four points tonight. Let me just bring up the box score here. Uh, let's take a look at the Edmonton Oilers. So, yeah, Connor McDavid, he had one goal, three assists, four points. Dylan Holloway, two goals, one assist, three points. Yanmark, two points. Hyman, two points. Dreisettel, two points. Henrique, Brown, Fogel, McLeod, Perry, Nugent Hopkins, the only forward. The only Edmonton forward that did not get a point tonight was Derek Ryan. But you know what? They didn't need that from Derek Ryan. And then on defense, every defenseman got a point except for CC and Broberg. However, CC and Broberg were a plus three tonight. Philip Broberg continues to play some incredible hockey. I love his game. I love his poise. I love his ability to skate with the puck. He doesn't 
force things. Now, he looked a little shaky in the first period. I will say, most of the Oilers, they looked pretty shaky in the first period. But they were able to just kind of, you know, they were able to lock things down. They were able to just settle down into their game. And at the end of the day, they figured out what they needed to do. They figured out a way to extend this series. Now, Florida ends up winning in Game 5. Listen, Oilers fans... The team gave us something to cheer for tonight in the Stanley Cup Final. They won their first Stanley Cup Final game since 2006. I'm really happy that this is not a situation like in 2022 in the in the Conference Finals where Colorado just absolutely blew the Oilers out of the water and swept us in the Conference Finals. The Emden Oilers, they did get a win. They finally were able to break through on Sergei Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky ended up being pulled after the Darnell Nurse goal to make it 5-1 for the Oilers, and that was a mercy pull. Uh, there was people in the chat, you know, mentioning that. And to me, that was Paul Maurice letting his team know you failed Sergei Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky has been here every step of the way for the Florida Panthers. He has cleaned up a lot of issues that happen in the, in the defensive zone for Florida and they don't happen often. I will admit Florida up until tonight has played a pretty, you know, as near perfect of a series as you could, but you knew it was time for him to, you knew something was going to give in my pregame report. I said that the Edmonton Oilers forward group, the longer the series goes, the more likely they are to break through. The floodgates are going to open up. They opened up tonight. Hopefully they saved a few goals for game five, though. I would love to, at minimum, see a game six back in Edmonton. Of course, the Oilers cannot win the Stanley Cup on home ice. If they were to somehow win game five and six, game seven would go in Florida. But we're not looking that far. We're looking at just game five here, which is coming up on Tuesday night. Speaking of Tuesday, I will be live. If you want to see more playoff content, if you're excited for the Oilers win, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit subscribe if you really like tonight's video. I will say, before I kind of shut things down, this is just my you know usual reaction, post-game raw reaction, fan reaction, whatever you want to call it. Shania Twain's a good luck charm. Do you think the Empton Oilers should be paying whatever they can, doing whatever they can to get Shania Twain in Florida, find a way for Shania Twain to get into that building? I think Shania Twain tonight was a, a huge influence on the Empton Oilers. She's a good luck charm. Um, I've loved Shania Twain my entire life. I've loved her since I was a kid. There was a Christmas a few years ago where the only thing I asked for my parents was uh, for Shania Twain soundtracks, whether it was vinyl or on a CD. I love Shania Twain, and when Oilers fans were singing Feel Like a Woman in the third period when there was about two minutes left, I was I had the biggest grin on my face. I love that. Shania Twain, of course, she performed before the game tonight at the outdoor, you know, party that they have set up. The NHL has this big outdoor, like, festival thing going on. Shania Twain, good luck charm. Oilers fans that tune in tonight, good luck charm. Dry Settle Jersey, good luck charm. You know, there's a, there's a lot of positives here. I will have a lot to talk about in the day after discussion tomorrow, of course. So if you want to make sure that you are able to tune into the day after discussion, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit the little bell so that you're notified when I do upload a new video. And of course, as always, the main important thing that I always hammer home on this channel is to tell somebody that you love them. Fight like a kid. And of course... I'll just quickly try and spin this around here. Here we go. Fight like Ben. Of course, these are the Ben Stelter wristbands. I don't know if they're still selling them. I always have the link to the Ben Stelter Foundation in the description of all of my videos. Um, I'd love to see the Oilers extend this series even further, but we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. We'll see if Edmonton can find a way on Tuesday to force a game six. This series, man, we'll see what happens. I'm excited right now. Uh, tomorrow, I'll be a lot more level-headed. I'll be a lot more calm. I'm enjoying the win tonight. Panthers fans, good game. Firm handshakes for, uh, through the uh, webcam. I always say ham shakes. It's hand handshakes. At some point, I'm going to have to have a ham on stream just to play up the meme here. Of course, the Oilers finally scored a power play goal, too. We wanted to mention that. All right, that's it for me tonight. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below, and uh, let's go Oilers. Take care.